Welcome back, everybody. We're coming to you live from Ignite Gaming Lounge, bringing you Top 8 Tekken 7 action. This is Fight Before Christmas, brought to you by the Low Kick Esports Gaming Crew. I'm Puppy Swarm. I'm NC. And we have a great match for you right off the bat. It's going to be Shadow 20Z versus Linux 20Z. And both these players had a pretty good run. Uh, Shadow 20Z was a little bit easier. Linux 20Z, he ran the gauntlet. So Shadow, his only problem was Swagmaster. He knocked Swagmaster into losers mm -hmm. and made his way into top eight. Now, Linux 20Z had to fight both Odell the Finest and Epic, the brothers. Yeah. And they're actually still <laughs> in top eight. But, man, I cannot imagine what it would be like to go up against those guys back to back to make it into top eight. It shows how strong they are that he had to knock both of them into losers, and then both of them made it back all the way through losers to make it into top eight themselves. And we'll get that match later. They actually play, have to play each other. Kind of messed up, but um, the 20 Z Boys Shadow and Linux, you know, we always talk about the 20 Z Boys Shadow and Junior. There's a lot of 20 Z Boys out here. And Linux Junior, being one of them. Speaking of Junior, didn't even make it into top eight today. No, uh, we have a stacked, stacked, stacked bracket today. And uh, Junior, unfortunately, wasn't able to make it to top eight. Here we go. Uh, we're getting um, Linux playing the Leroy. Yeah, he has been a lab machine with Leroy. Now, Shadow, I actually didn't know he had any interest in Ganryu. And Ganryu. Shadow is one of those guys who will surprise you with character selection sometimes. I did see him playing a little bit of Ganryu before, but here we go. Guaranteed uh, 4 to 3 plus 4 off the headbutt there. Now what's wild is both of these characters are extremely high damage. Absolutely. Leroy maybe have a little bit easier time getting his damage. Uh, Ganryu's got a little bit of an execution requirement. The crouch cancels, but Shadow not going to miss any of these 10 frame punishes roll here. roll on him. Nice throw break. Breaks the 1 plus 2. Using that tricky slide there, trying to catch Linux out and catches him floating and get the first round of the board. So far, we have not seen Linux pull out any of the parries or any of the real tricky stuff with Leroy. But, I mean, this is only round one, now into round two. Got a lot of time to mess with this. Man, that low from Ganry was yeah. dirty. The down forward three leaves him plus five on hit. Oh, big counter hit launch. will take him to the wall. Oh, and the 100 hands. Give him the hands. Oh, he's just putting hands on him. Taking Second round, round two. Shadow looking real solid with this Ganryu pick right now. Honestly, I think Shadow could pick any character and do well. This is true. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, that is nice a launch. Duck. Ganryu has one of the better wall standing twos in the game. <laughs> oh, the damage. If Linus can keep himself alive here, he's got one last chance. Oh, nice duck again from Shadow. Taking a quick no round brown in game one. Man, Ganryu is really a showman, isn't he? Taking the tips from Julia. But you gotta put on a show for the crowd as well as you have to honor the rituals of sumo wrestling. You'll see some of his intros where he throws the salt and stuff. Of course. But Linux staying with the Leroy, going to stage select. We're not going to see him switch to Marduk this time. Now what's interesting is both these characters, it's only been, what, a week since we've seen them? It's been uh, almost two weeks now. Uh, almost, almost two weeks ago. I believe this Tuesday is two yes. weeks. So there has been time to lab. But the question I have is, has either of these players labbed each other's characters? Well, these uh, uh, Ganry obviously is a legacy character who didn't change very much, actually. He even kept his tag two movement. But Leroy being the newcomer to this series, I mean, he's the one that everybody's on the lookout for. He's like, he's such a difficult character to even lab because he does have such a good move list. But look at this, Shadow clearly aware with the nice duck into down forward two. There's a hell sweep from Linux. First one we've seen. Oh, tries the second one. Ooh, tries to get him the back one plus two. It's a safe 12 frame counter hit launcher. Pretty gross. And the homing attack that Linux is doing is plus one. It's a very impressive tool, but it is high. That one, guaranteed follow up. Tries Ooh. to parry. Ready stance. Already looking like a much better round from Linux. Looks like this round he's been able to slow Shadow down. Ooh, full crash down for two connects though, and he's got rage. Yes, he's gonna finish it out without even having to use it. Round two. Fight. It's a lot closer. Oh, there's a counter hit right yeah. off the rip. 
That's gonna go to the wall. Just do it again. Ugh, Half-Life. Trying to catch him again with the down one plus two. Such a strong counter hit launcher. See that back for the, the homing kick that Linux just did. That is actually one of Leroy's best impressive wall moves. It's a mid homing. It's only minus eight. And it wall splats. Okay, nice interruption there from Shadow. Get him out of Hermit Stance. Oh, tries, tries to parry. parry. Really the first time we saw it actually effective. Oh. Rage drive. I don't know what kind of shenanigans he's trying, but get that out of here. Well, Linux finally gets around on the board. Nice blocks. Good punish. Not falling for the hug. Uh, oh, the guaranteed follow up. There's so much damage off the headbutt. Tries to shoot him with the back one plus two. Oh, 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 the Ganryu Death it Fist. It was so chunky. <laughs> the Ganryu Death Fist, it hurts. <laughs> That's oh. a big hit. Not quite getting the wall, but oh, yeah, that's a wall bounce. Death fist wall bounce. Wall bounce might as well be a wall. And there it is, Shadow taking a clean two over Linux, Six only giving up to one walking. round. Man, that is a tough loss if you are Linux. Man, that that Gander you picked though. <laughs> I mean, we've seen Shadow recently. Uh, obviously, Claudio main, but the Zafina has been very strong. He normally, you know, we saw him a lot of Red Bull picking the Zafina until he was put into, you know, into a corner and back into a corner where he had to pick the Claudio, but now, Ganryu. Maybe he's got a, a fourth <laughs> character in the pocket because he's also pulled out Anna. Pulls so. out, he pulls out Anna occasionally. There was one Super Saturdays where he just, Mazen put him into losers against, I believe it was actually against his Claudio, and then in loser side when they played each other again, he pulled out Geese. And blew up Mason. It was crazy. Like that's the first time I've heard of him playing geese. geese. Like, so I don't know what to say about that. Like because most of us know that he's the Claudio guy, but yeah. do we he's not the, know he's the, the Claudio guy anymore? Do, he's what? the American hero on Claudio. Is he, is I he mean, the, he's like the world hero on Claudio. Is he Who becoming the, the American Mokujin? Maybe? <laughs> is he starting to work his way around the world? He's like knees. He's going to be Tekken God Prime on every single character in the game. Someone's got to do it. Uh, we're going to get another uh, match coming up for you on winner's side. Our other winner's side match uh, is going to be Panchon and Dylet. I'm um, just waiting for these players to get up to the stage. Um, Panchon had an interesting route. Uh, because you guys might recognize, if you watch other fighting games, a player named Royal Heart. Especially if you watched Red Bull Conquest Finals, because Royal Heart was our Chicago representative for Eunice. Yes. And if you watched the stream earlier today, you know that Royal Heart won Eunice. He won Eunice today, and now he's in top eight for Tekken. But Panchon was the one who put him into losers. So Panchon's had a pretty interesting run, and then Dial it as well. Um, Beaten Frosty Love, yep. local Heihachi player, to make it into top eight here. Yeah, they do play a lot, and I do believe Dylet usually takes it over Frosty. Yeah. So it's not like it's an upset or anything. But as far as I know, he actually didn't have the easiest time. I was actually talking to Dylet before that match, and he said he was actually really nervous facing Frosty Love because of that familiarity. Sure. You don't know if they're going to whip out something that you're not ready for. You know, you're used to playing against somebody's you know, their main character, but if they have something in the pocket you didn't know about, oof. And that, that's exactly what I was telling Dialet, is because you know each other from locals and other whatnot, like training partners, sometimes mm -hmm. you just have to start pulling out the whack stuff that you don't normally do in those training sessions. Like, you know, let's just say I don't normally go for house sweeps. I'm gonna start going for house sweeps because this is now a different setting. You don't know what I wanna do if I start doing things you've never seen before. Sure. And speaking of Claudio players, Dylet, uh, his strongest character has to be his Claudio. Um, we occasionally also see him pull out a Fang. Um, he's got a number of different characters, honestly. Um, but Panchon is uh, Nina yes. and also Lily player. Um, I actually haven't seen him pull out a Lily, but I know him for Nina. Very strong Nina. And I, I know Dylet, I believe... He said he wanted to get really far today, so I don't expect him to play anything except Claudio. Now, if he does, maybe he's in, maybe he's got some game plan. 
in his opponent's head. And maybe he's just trying to schmix me because I said it. <laughs> he's, he's telling you he's playing Claudio. And he's, <laughs> he he's can hear me. I'm sure, he can, <laughs> I'm sure he can hear it. He was, I'm not paying attention to that commentator. Commentator don't know me. Yeah, we've seen uh, Panchon pulled it out. One of the Super Saturdays pulled out the Lily pick um, when he was down a game. Um, Lily's a character that's not been treated so well by the multiple patches. Um, for some reason, they just keep beating her down and down and down. The most recent one, her, her quarter circle four, three plus four. No longer tail spins on hit, on natural hit. It just uh, does the ballerina stun. Very bad nerf for her. So, um, maybe he'll pick it out if he goes down a game, but uh, I think we're gonna see Danina here. Yeah. All right, both characters, both players were seeing their mains come out, Claudio and Nina. And these are both legacy players. They come from uh, Tag 2 and further beyond that. Looks like we got the Devil's Pit. So Panchon has been on a tear today, so... If you had to pick between Dialit and Panchon, who would you put your money on? I think Panchon's favored in this. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen them play each other before. Um, Panchon definitely has the tournament nerves and everything Don't necessary to perform in a top eight like this. Time to die. Round one. He also streams. Uh, follow him on Twitter, catch his streams. Oh. Well, he's already starting big. Yeah, big counter hit started out. Good movement from Dylan to get himself out of the wall. He didn't want to be back there against Nina. That's awful if you have to eat spit setups at the wall. Tries to go for running twos. Playing small right now, no big risks. Nice duck from Panchon. Spacing each other out, 30 seconds passed. Dialit has a little bit of a life disadvantage. And he's getting pushed to the wall here. Panchon keeping the pressure off. Dialit spends the rage immediately, keeping the blue hands. There we go. First round on the board for Panchon. That was extremely One, slow two. for a top eight match. Fun. Winter semis at that. There's a lot of small buttons. Tries to spit on him. Too far for Ooh, it. Orbital. All right. Taking him to the wall. It's a low splat. Not able to finish the wall combo. Ooh, that's going to hurt. Sidewall might have actually saved Dylan there. Dylan does have the wall pressure, opts to spend the rage drive, and already spends the blue hand. He has a huge life deficit here. Sidestep four, trying to make it work. Okay, he's got to find something big and whiffing while running two is not the way to start it. Yeah, it's a nice step around from Panchon. Easy punish, goes up two rounds to zero. Now, thankfully, with Devil's Pit, this does turn Round into an infinite three. stage, so maybe this will Fight. now turn into Dylan's favor, now that he has infinite space behind him. He definitely didn't get anything out of the walls himself. Panchon's been making all of the walls. Oh, Ooh, big magic counter four. hit magic four, but isn't able to convert. And Dylan needs to find some sort of entry. He's not getting really any mileage. Oh, oh there's, there's one. one. There's a hop kick. Oh, but drops the full combo. Finally able to crack Panchon's defense, but need to make more of that. Almost even on life. 14 seconds. Dialet has oh, rage. Spends the rage drive. Should kill. Yes. Dialet Panchon out of a sidestep. Dialet's taking his first round. We're seeing fantastic movement from Panchon, creating a lot of opportunities here. Oh, that's a big oh, launch. Oh, nice. Still big working damage. on a perfect. Puts Dialet into rage again. Tries to blonde bomb through. Nice blocks from Panchon. Dialet's actually holding on to his rage. Oh, nice. Okay, doesn't Commentator curse, as Hold I'm saying, and he not holding on to rage, spending for the rage drive to get blue hand. He's got to find something big here. Oh, 
and that's not it. That was safe. I think Dylan just got caught trying to backdash there, and Panchon taking game one. I don't want to say it was a convincing first game, but it was definitely a dominant first game in terms of spacing and control. He didn't run him over. He kept him where he wanted at all times through all 40 seconds, 45 seconds each round. Yeah, Panchon commanded the movement there. I mean, he he kept Dilet where he wanted him to be. He was avoiding a lot of running twos and forward forward fours with his sidesteps. But now uh, Dilet opting to go geometric plane. So square walled non stage. Time to die. Round one. Fight. I almost want to see Dialect go a little bit wild, do some unconventional things, because he didn't find many entrances except for that one hop kick. He only threw out a total of three hop kicks, I think, in that whole set. Oh, that's a counter hit, yep. To the wall. No oh, weird hop kick setup. Nice throw break in the side switch. That's punishable, yep. Nice throw break. Dialet had a twitch duck, but didn't recognize. He's got rage. Spent the drive, spends the blue hand, sides the four. Dialet has the life advantage. Not anymore, one second. Ooh. Nope. Nice patience from Panchon and good use of the rage drive to open up his legs. Ooh, just a little bit too far for the evil miss to connect. So most of Dilet's mileage has been from his side support and other lows. He's finally starting to catch Panchon with some mids. I think after all this clipping of the lows, Panchon's finally starting to get a little bit twitch ducky. There it is. Dilet taking his second round of the set. Yeah, Panchon not giving Dilet any opportunities to whiff punish anything. Making sure everything connects as a block at bare minimum. Oh, that's Ooh, a big counter. Counter hit down forward too. Where are we going? Gets the blue hand. Doesn't spend the Beyblade. Spends it there though. Good blocks from Panchon on the second down 2-2. Two, two. Oh, nice backdashes from Dialip. Still not enough. Yeah, gets caught by the Blom Bomb at the wall. Now Panchon on set point. Yeah, now Panchon is just walking on him. 10 seconds in, he's already at half-life. There's, oh, there's a hop, hop kick. kick. It's the wall and the blue hand. Block. He's got one chance here. Rage drive spent. Oh, oh, that's the blue blonde bomb. Panchon taking it. 2-0. I mean, that, after that second game, that was pretty convincing. That was um, extremely convincing. Panchon putting on a clinic on uh, how to not whiff buttons and assert your dominance in the neutral. Um, so he will advance, and then that means uh, our winner's finals would be Shadow and Panchon. That's true. Um, yep. But now we are going to drop down to the loser side of top eight, where, oh, it's fratricide here. Epic versus Odell, the you brothers. Hate to see it. So there's going to be, uh, I don't know who their coaches are going to be during this match since they normally coach each other. <laughs> They'll coach each other as they lose and win. <laughs> hey, bro, you should have launched that. <laughs> Come on, man. You know that's minus 12. Yeah. Yeah, these, uh, they are two of my favorite people to watch. Um, and they're just two of the greatest people in the community. Like, you've talked to Epic. You've Epic's talked to like Adele. the nicest guy. Yeah. <laughs> you walk up to any of those guys and they go, hey, how you doing? It's it, it's one thing if you have an older brother that plays fighting games or something that like shares interests with you, but an older brother who actually wants you to succeed at them too. Like he's he's so determined to, to like teach Odell to be the best. Like, he wants Odell to be the best.
and Odell is at such a young age that he's way well into his way of doing that. Drive. He's, he's, he's 15, is that right? Yeah, yeah, he's 15, and he's already a top eight player at locals. Like he's a monster. monster. Just imagine in what this guy's gonna do in two years. Yeah, and he's um he's been a geese loyalist through and through. Uh, with season three changes, a lot of people dropped the character. Family weren't too happy about it. Family feud. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, Epic, of course, being a, a lead loyalist. Um, we will occasionally see him drop something random like a Kazuya, but almost always seen him on the lead. Odell, 2D character specialist, Geese, and Eliza. Um, rarely see him pick other things. He sometimes picks other characters. He, he's actually so got a gamut I of female to, characters I have in the to pocket. stop you right there because he was playing Leroy against Linux. Was he? Oh, man, not another one. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone switching to Leroy. <laughs> So uh, you're right, he is a very big 2D specialist, but he has been dabbling. Now honestly, who hasn't been dabbling in Le with Leroy? It's actually, in this match, specifically when Odell plays his brother Epic, he will sometimes pick a very random character that you don't expect. I've seen him pick uh, Lily before in this matchup. I've seen him pick Katarina before in this matchup. Trying to throw his brother out. It's like you got a training partner, like you were saying before, like between Shadow and Linux, for example, like or Shadow and Junior. Like you know who you're playing with, you know their tendencies. You got to throw them off somehow. So sometimes it's just a character they don't expect. Man, look at all those pads that didn't get desynced before the last matches. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you desync those pads. So more than likely, we're going to see the Lee pick out of Epic. But what is Odell going to go for? It's it's a grab bag, to be honest. He's got a plethora of characters now that he can choose from. Oh, they're on the wrong sides. Let's see, so Odell is yeah, covering Geese. we got to swap the names because they, uh, they side-switched. So it seems you're right, right. Puppy. Geese I was and right. Lee. I'm the best. I was right. Geese and Lee. <laughs> and we even got the Howard Estate. There we go. It was destined. Battle. Fated. Can't escape from crossing fate. Let's see if Odell gets the opportunity to perform a TOD. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to see it, but I do want to see it. <laughs> you kind of want to see it. Just kinda so you can pop off. I haven't seen anyone do one. I mean, at least like a crazy uh, Howard Estate combo. I haven't seen anyone doing it in a match at a local uh, in quite some time, so. It's hype regardless. And we get the special geese intro. Bring I'm a it weeb. On. I'll, I'll destroy <laughs> you all. <laughs> Dang <laughs> weebs. <laughs> all right, so these two completely familiar with this matchup. It is down to pure fundamentals <laughs> and mind games. Odell already pushing Epic to that wall break. No. Doesn't complete gas and storms. Just wanted to you know, launch for that. It's been 20 seconds and barely any buttons have been pressed. Odell is so, sitting at full so HP. So much respect. 30 seconds though, but there's a wall bounce. Oh, this is going to hurt. Wow, the back 4-4 four four whiffed. But Ooh, blocks the slide. Gonna get a second wall, yes indeed. Tries to oh. ground grab, but doesn't yeah, get interesting it. Interesting adjustment. Now oh, Epic with a chance. Nice duck. Yeah, Ops not spending rage drive since the wall was there. 10 seconds, did he press a button? No. Oh. A little bit too ambitious. Odell gets the first round and has the meter on deck now. Great position for him to be in. Tackle gets flipped over. Oh, not the face. The full string. Ooh, four, four, three. Odell sitting on a bar and a half. Hasn't spent anything yet. Again, 30 seconds in. So just now, two. someone is at half HP. Okay, slide, take the guaranteed damage afterwards. 
the respect. It's immense. 15 seconds, guys. Epic really creating as much space as he can. Interesting. I can't tell if either one of them has the health advantage, but oh, now we know Odell's definitely got lead. it. Just run away. He can't do anything. Yeah, yeah that's he's it. gonna time him out. Odell up two rounds now and has not even spent a bar in the process. This is a bad position for Epic having to run back three rounds now. And he gets two bars. Yeah. Odell has all the cash to spend right now. This is a good start though. But I mean, this is Geese. He can turn this round quite quickly. Yep, guaranteed off the ground. Ooh, just in the ball from that back. Takes him to the leg. With a perfect. You know, it's great that Epic is winning rounds, but I think it's almost a detriment. Oh, never mind. I was about to say that Odell was working on max, max power there. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Are we gonna see a balcony break combo? Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, it just keeps going. Jeez. Oh, and the Hockney stuffs his run in. Oh, oh, Boy. trying to go for tricky oh, stuff. Counter hit. Let's go. Take it to the wall. Sidewall splat. Slidey. Slide. One, one touch will do it now. Bates oh, he out. tries the spring kick. And Odell spent two bars in the process, about to get his last one, but now Epic in a great position. I think this is as optimal as it can oh, get for Epic. This hurts though. Bounce. Ball bounce. <laughs> Tries to parry. Epic is at a big disadvantage here. No, and this should do it. Oh, the sidewall side save flies, no. except it doesn't. Because he'll wake up in the side step four. Just uh, a sidestep three. I, I can't remember. There's too many characters with sidestep moves. It was a valiant run back from Epic to get two rounds on the board, but now he's going to go to Dragon's Nest. Get ready for the next Down a game, looking to take it to a octagonal smaller stage. I think this is actually Epic's stage of choice whenever he loses, no matter the situation. It's always interesting to see um, pe people have certain stages that they prefer. Uh, we know locally Jape had Twilight Conflict. Twilight That's his Conflict, stage. yep. Every Akuma player goes to the Mishima uh, stage. We saw Dilet go to Geometric Plane. I've seen him do that recently. Come on. This might be amusing. Maybe Epic needs Odell to get meter in wow. order to. <laughs> <laughs> in order to hey, win. Here, bro, rounds. just hit me a couple times. <laughs> Oh, actually, it's just letting him hit him a couple times. False sense of security. You got meter. <laughs> you sure you can take the life advantage? Nice low parry. Oh, drops combo though. Hopefully, four, I don't want to fight him. About even. Still not too many buttons being pressed, even though it's 30 seconds in. Oh, nice. Blocks a slidey. This will carry to the wall. Should be able to kill here. Yep. Die. Yeah, just enough. Now Odell two rounds away. Again, this is loser's bracket, so whichever brother loses here is going home. You're killing your brother. It's going to be an awkward car ride. Again, spacing. Both these players having no issues just spending the entire 60 seconds. What's interesting is that it's it's Epic trying to create the space when Odell's happy to sit back and throw Rapukins. I mean, every Rapukin blocked is a decent chip. chunk of meter and chip. And another block slide. Odell really on top of these now. Epic with Rage. He's only got 17 oh, and seconds. another block slide. It's like three for five on these block slides now. Fight. Oh, board one plus two gets clipped out by the orbital. This will be big damage. He's got two and a half meter. Yeah, he didn't have a clean splat, so opts not to spend it at the wall. I'm expecting the Raging Storm. Epic just standing there. Max meter, low parry comes out. Epic Another dropping drop it. Combo. 
Okay, Slide doesn't get blocked that time. Oh, Boon Slice. Oh, that's no. not and good. The the prime oh, but the Rygo win. doesn't kill him. And that was two meters down. This is your chance, Epic. Your final chance. Slidey connects. One more mix up. Oh, oh the jump back for Pukin. Odell taking it 2 0 over his brother. Oh, man. Looking very clean there, though, in the second game, especially. I think both games were dominant in Odell's favor. Epic, I believe, had only one round per game, so not great. So Epic will move on through the loser side of the bracket. Uh, and then coming up now, so another little bit of a grudge match, Afterburn and Royal Heart. Royal Heart put Afterburn into loser's bracket. And Afterburn had to make his way all the way back through to get up on stage here. And the biggest part of all, Afterburn running through losers, he killed Junior. Took Junior. Out Afterburn of the killed Junior. Took him out of the bracket entirely. Now that has probably been one of our biggest upsets through today. Sure. Because that was one of our top picks coming in the top eight was Shadow Junior, and here we are, just Shadow, no Junior today. And we've seen uh, Afterburn's known for his far on play. He is got to be Leroy. I mean, he's, he's got yeah, he's got to be the strongest far on in Chicago. But now he's playing Leroy, and we'll see what he's I'm got. I'm dabbling, you're dabbling, everyone's dabbling. With I mean, Leroy. you have to dabble with the character to know the matchup at least and know how, how bad it really is. But it's <laughs> oppressive. Leroy has extremely strong buttons. But Royal There's Heart is a Fina player, um, and so I had a, play, a chance to play a bunch of games against him. You know this man is a true fighting game player with the way his spacing and his punishment is, his whiff punishment is phenomenal. Like, you will not miss a button. If you miss yours, oh, you're getting launched, baby. You gotta watch out for this man. And what's most impressive is he plays both 2D and 3D. Usually yeah. 2D players stick in 2D and stay dominant in 2D. To be both dominant in 2D and 3D, it's almost unprecedented. So he's gonna go up the Huarong. I, th I think he started on the Huarong in this matchup as well when they played in, in, a, in a winner's side. I wasn't able to catch the whole thing, but. Get ready for the next and we actually went back to the Howard Estate. Who is stage selecting? That couldn't have been Seth, random. You back there on production, ste choosing Howard Estate every time. We see you. We know you want to hear that, that sweet, sweet soy sauce for geese. <laughs> How did, he get, how did he get that motorcycle in here? Let's start this. Round one. Fight. All right. See if Afterburn can get his run back here. So this is a double jeopardy situation. Afterburn looking for revenge. Starting off strong by pressing all the buttons. Already has Royal Heart at the wall. Not stopping anytime yeah, soon. Make him guess. Royal Heart is, you know, he's been putting a lot of hours into tech and oh, and then yeah, launched Scarecrow for. Especially since Red Bull Finals, he's been putting a lot of hours into this game. But that means that he might not know every matchup. Gotta test his knowledge here. But there's a big whiff into a down forward too. That's what I was saying. He is ready to pull the trigger on those. Spring kick connects. Nice duck under the grab and then launches with the wall stand one two. Now this is the situation that is most scary for Royal. He's let Afterburn live. He's given him space. Afterburn's oh. now going to press all the buttons. Gets the wall break. Yeah. Good block by Royal. He's got rage. He's got 30 seconds. He's got all the time in the world. Oh, is oh, that going to win punish? Win punished. <laughs> My goodness. I'm sorry. What were you saying, Puppy, about Royal being good I at win punishing? You, man. You, what was that? You got to make sure this. you do not give him an opportunity here. Just like that, tying it up. Go for tricky stuff. Got punishment on the down four two from Zafina. Tricky stuff. Yeah, check out the legs. Power crush right through. Yep. Step on him. Use those heels. Oh, he's pressing buttons. He's doing strings. Ooh, Doesn't no throw break. break. 
Afterburn going up two rounds to one now on game point. Fight. Okay, Wait, punish. punish. Afterburn again pressing all the buttons in the world. Rose got to find a way to steal his turn back. Check out the legs. Rose got rage again. Power crush. Yeah, ah. that'll do it. Afterburn taking game one here. And then we'll just frame Skyrocket just to flex a little bit at the end. So the one round we saw Royal take was a, not necessarily a dominant round, but he definitely showed off his abilities as a player. But then every other round, Afterburn made sure never to whiff a button. So it's to Royal's detriment to not be able to keep space. And I don't necessarily like that it hit rematch. I almost feel like a infinite stage would have been much better for him. Well, Hart's getting a lot of mileage out of checking Afterburn's legs uh, and putting him into that low mix-up situation. A nice block from Afterburn there. Ooh, in the tailspin. And they get the wall here. Big damage. Oh. Afterburn now looking really solid. Trying to close Royal Howard completely. I'm not sure if Royal has any match of familiarity with this. It seems like he's just freezing up whenever he starts eating any buttons. He's got a life lead here. This is his chance. Oh, and the down back one gets blocked. Flips him out of the air. Afterwards, now going for tricky stuff. And he has rage. Oh, no, we punch up. Back three will connect. Guaranteed. You saw right there, Safina actually has the best backdash in the game. She just barely escaped after Burn's buttons. Ooh, floated out, but not able to convert the combo. Pushing Royal Heart to that wall break, which we haven't even seen used this game yet. But he does get the sidestep into a launch, decent damage, pushes Afterburn to the wall. Oh, that was sweet. Royal Heart on Rage, see if he can do anything with it. Afterburn's just outside of Rage. Oh, gets with the Rage Drive. Afterburn now on set point. Oh, the Peacekeeper connecting. Wall splat. splat. This not is not looking, looking good. good. Not at all. Rose got to find something. He does have the wall pressure. This is a good way to start this. He's got rage. Take the plus Spends frames. it for the bajillion plus frames. Oh, the throw break, though. Rose got to be very careful here. Oh, no throw break. Afterburn taking it. 2-0 over Royal Heart. Got to get his run back. After Royal Heart had put him into losers to begin with. After watching that, it's kind of surprising to see that Royal was the one to put Afterburn into losers. Afterburn looks extremely confident. He had the pressure the entire time. He was the commander of those two matches. Yeah. He asserted his pressure in the neutral. Uh, made sure that Royal Heart was forced to keep guessing and, and on the back foot trying to block the whole time. And, you know, uh, ultimately didn't work out for him. Wasn't able to put the mix on Afterburn. So good stuff, Afterburn. So Afterburn staying alive. Let's see, we are going to go into our other losers. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go into losers. Yep. This would be semis. Our I have quarters. a bracket on a, on a thing called a, a phone. So we're going to get uh, Dylan and Odell coming up now. Yep, so Dylan and Odell. Yeah, loser quarters. Sorry, loser quarters. Loser quarter. There, I don't even need. I don't need this thing. We Still have in the trash. Got the fancy man, Seth, on our production. Let's see. We are trying to get our players up to the board. Again, it's like, it's like herding cats. <laughs> Again, if you're just now tuning in, this is Fight Before Christmas 3. On the mic, you obviously have right here, NT. I'm Got Puppy this man. Storm. And this is brought to you by Low Kick Esports. Uh, Low Kick right here. Bringing you great monthly events here in uh, Chicago. Technically, we're in Skokie today. Um, but between Super Saturdays, Fall Fights, now Fight Before Christmas. Yeah, we've had a uh, lot of great productions in the, the closing out of the year. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's much more to come in 2020.
We have no shortage of fantastic events in Chicago right now, especially for Tekken. Uh, between these events, um, GameWorks has got some stuff going on now. Uh, Mishima Monthly by BG Callisto. Like we have. Yeah, shout outs to Callisto. Well, we're gonna have a stacked scene. I mean, we we're, we saw it today. All these killers that came out today. I mean, there's uh, like too many people sleep there, on Chicago. There Chicago. was only a handful of people who didn't come out that I would consider killers. This is a stacked bracket. Chicago has a lot of killer players, and I think we're slept on a little bit too much. Chicago won Red Bull. That alone should be a signal saying, hey, we have strong players. Oh, yeah. But I don't Which, know. We just saw one of those guys, Royal Heart. We saw Shadow earlier. And then uh, Duel Kevin. Uh, man, what a monstrous team that won that Red Bull Finals. That was crazy. I think there was only one game dropped, and that was Eunice. But then Royal Heart brought it back 3-0 with his Hilda. Shadow had a dominating performance there. <laughs> That's mean, exactly why Duel Kevin put Shadow last. He up knew. Anakin and Jimmy J. Tran in groups and everything. Oh, he man. He knew it was Shadow would close it out for the team. Yeah. Not a doubt in his mind. So we're going to see uh, Dylet and Odell come up here. Uh, no surprises from uh, Dylet going with the Claudio pick. Um, Odell, however... What are we gonna get? We're gonna get the geese pick again? Yeah, we're gonna get the geese pick. All right. At this stage of the game, I don't think you'd really see any out-of-pocket picks because you want to stick with what you're most comfortable. This is very far in the bracket. Really, the only time I think you would want to do that is if you face your training partner. Sure. And uh, what did surprise me is that we finally didn't get Howard Estate. <laughs> <laughs> so we got but we did pit. get doubles pit earlier, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, so did we, we really two, win? We really got two stages on rotation right now. Yo, who's holding R1? Tag two days. <laughs> Someone's holding R1. We got Undo Troy. Nah. Oh, we're looking fancy. Both both players putting the suited costumes on. Round one. We got Christmas around the corner. We got to look good for family. <laughs> Odell taking a slight life lead early on. Blocks the hop kick, easy punish. <laughs> Dial it, not looking to do too much. Gets a throw. No throw break. 20 seconds in. Oh, oh there's a counter, counter hit. Down for two. Big damage, ends in the blue hand. Running Ooh, two. Running two connects. Oh, nice block. Any stray hit will do it for Dylet. And Dylet has options to keep it safe with that blue hand. Doesn't punish the parry attempt. Nice. Dylet taking round one here. Odell's almost got his first meter. Couple more hits. Oh, oh. We're running two trades with, with the, the Rapukin. I think Dylet will take that one. It's unfortunate because he didn't get his blue hand off that trade. Oh, interesting, yeah. Good back nice dash back dial it. Oh, Hop kick. Crushes the low and is going to take him to the wall. Gets yes. a blue hand. Doesn't spend the blue hand. Just does a single down two and no throw break. Favorable side for Odell now. Duck the high Jake hit, but that is a mix up. Oh, Lord, one plus two over the low. Deadly rain. Oh, and he switched sides. Hello. Interesting. Should kill anyway. Yeah, that'll do it. Ties it up. Round three. Fight. Had to make it look fancy. Switch the sides. I mean, if that were me, that would have screwed me up. <laughs> so that was well, really thankfully, there are no <laughs> directional inputs for Deadly <laughs> yeah. Ray, but there we go. Dialect getting another hop kick. Going to waste out that maximum from Odell. Gets his blue hand. Ooh. Tries to throw the parry attempt. <laughs> dialect has got a big life lead. Odell on rage to... again. He can make this comeback. Dialect doesn't need to do anything risky. Flips the legs and get the guaranteed throw. Stays down a little bit. Hits him with the low. Got the clips. Dial it up 2-1 and no walls now. 
Again, I think this is to Dilate's advantage. He's very good at backdashing and controlling space. Yeah, we've seen him create a lot of openings uh, and, and get out of pressure through these Does it launch the back 3-2? He didn't max mode it. That's minus 15. Ah, please launch that. Nice break. Oh, he doesn't oh, launch the down for either. Dilate's leaving so many launchers on the table. Guaranteed. Spend a little bit of max money on its left. Did you just call it max money? No. Oh, said max mode. I think I did. Max money's tight. <laughs> call, instead of EX mode or EX moves, you got max money moves. I'm calling it from that now on. Final Chop the legs. Di or, uh, Odell tied it up. Almost got a meter on deck. There it is. Spends, Spends it raw. raw. Is that a missed input? That was. I don't think so. Choice. That that seemed very intentional to me. Ooh, four one plus two. Doesn't have the maximum, so it's not as much damage as it could be, but it's still a good chunk. Yeah, with the season three changes, that moon slicer though, that gives him a lot more damage on open ground. Oh man, Dialit's on his last hit. Oh, jump the rage drive. One? Okay. He's got a big mountain to climb, and he's only got 21 seconds to do it. Spends the Beyblade. Gets it back. Next, he's got blue hand now. He got 15 seconds. Oh, oh the, the jump, jump back, back from Pukin. Have we seen that before? I think we've seen that before. The jump back from Pukin. Before he closed it out against his brother with the jump back from Pukin. <laughs> that was Dialit's game looking like it. I mean, he was up two rounds, and uh, and now Odell brought it all the way back. So. We'll see if you see that message, Puppy. You see that? Connected we, devices, USB. We desynced our controllers. Someone pressed the PlayStation button. They tried. No, Dialit uh, uh, chooses to go for the Kinder Gym. I respect this choice. You rarely see a player pick Kinder Gym. It's almost always Geometric Plane because, I mean, honestly, they're the same. Is this bad manners to pick Kinder Gym against Odell? It could be. Sending a message. Pocket goes unpunished. Oh, pop kick. Nice. Punishes the whiffed orbital there. It's a blue hand. Oh, Deadly Rave's raw. I don't think so, but doesn't really punish it. One more straight hit will kill. There, there it is. is. Homing. Uh, round two. Fight. Odell's got the meter on board now. Playing the spacing game. No throw break. Challenges the max mode with the down punch. Yeah, interesting choice, but it did work out for him. Counter oh. hit, doing strings. Again, no break. Dilate has not broken a back uh, one plus two throw yet, I think, this entire set. Counter oh. hit, that's dead. Odell also gets one meter back. Yeah, in a good position now. Again, back to our small game. Oh, doesn't spend the max mode. He didn't think it was going to kick out back. 3 3 hit. counter hit does. Gets the blue hand and the wall. Ooh, Harry. Harry! This is going to hurt. The corner might actually save Dylan here. Yeah. In open ground, he would have been able to get a full combo out of that. Doesn't punish the 1 1 2. The Ooh, flying man. body press. Blocks the down 2 2. Wall splat, can't kill. KO. Dial it up, two rounds to one. Round four. He's he saw this happen before. Can he close it out though? Eats a running one. Top kick the back three. I, I hate that combo because of the whiff. It always looks like it's gonna drop. Hop kick again on the max out. mode. What a madman. 
Sometimes that's the crazy stuff you have to do. There he there goes. He breaks go. a back one plus two. Doesn't fall for the wall bounce. Takes a wall running one. Oh, chop the legs. Doesn't throw him. Blue stuff. Oh. Closes it out with the knee. You win. A dial it. Able yeah. to tie it up. Odell going to stage select. Not staying on Kinder Gym. The G Corp helipad. Get ready for the Apparently he wants that small stage with the wall breaks. Geese does get a lot out of especially a parry at the wall. I think with happen. walls, this stage is the smallest rather than Souk. But once the walls break, I think it's yeah. a little bit larger than Souk. So maybe Odell wants the small aspect. Yeah, if you get a nice parry at the wall, you can do that little uh, side step around and then convert into a full combo. Round one. Fight. Already getting some small buttons going. Odell taking all the pokes. Yeah, connecting with a few back threes. No punish on the down That's board. a parry. Yep. That's exactly what you were just yeah. saying right there before we started this. Step to convert it. That's gross. That didn't even take a bar. Out of the air. Good conversion from Dylan to get the wall running two under. Doesn't spend Pop it. Pop kick. Woo. Dylan taking round one on Odell's stage. You think Dylan's got a bit of a read here? He looks like he's going for some craziness. He has had, he's, able, he's been able to stuff the max mode conversion. So we've seen it happen a couple times. Odell's pulled a lot more power crushes out, although I don't think it's really working out for him. It seems like he's taking the loss, but he wow. crouches under the running too. He should be able to close this out. That was a fantastic duck into the wall stand too. It does recover very fast. Not the easiest thing to do, but down floor two to start the round out. So he's gonna get the wall break here. Got the blue hand too. Ooh, tried to go for the up four. And he spends four. the blue hand and gets comboed. Yep. There it is conversion. again. To the other wall. That's why he wants the stage. Very easy to pull that conversion off. Dylet does have rage, but this oh, will end it. Yeah, back three two, spend the max mode. Now set point for Odell. Check out the legs. Chop his head again. <laughs> okay. Chopping the legs. Leave this boy alone. Oh, no. man, there's another one. Counter hits this time. Gets the blue hand. Has the wall pressure. Flying body press misses. Oh, Beyblade's yes. parry attempt. Breaks the wall, too. Ooh, but weird camera shenanigans. No, oh, that's not going to punish, I don't believe. No. Oh, ducks under. Wall rising, too. And now we are on double Luigi. Let's see who will make it into the loser semis here. I got to give it to Dylan. He had his legs chopped over and over and over last round, but he didn't take any mental damage. He made sure to keep his head cool, stay in the game, but he's taking a lot of back one yeah. plus two throws. No mental damage, but a lot of physical damage. <laughs> Health is a resource. And Odell now with the meter. Sidewall side saves wall. lives, but no. gets the ground grab. Guaranteed. Odell takes it. Very close set, though. Odell taking a 2-1 over Dylet to advance into loser semis. Good stuff to Odell. It was a good run from Dylet. He had a bit of a struggle getting into this point, so well played by him. And I'm sure Epic's happy with Odell. Probably would have been pretty angry if he beat him and then just lost immediately. I would have been too. So now, coming up next on stream, we'll get our other losers quarters match. Thank you for tuning in, guys, and joining us for top eight action here. Brought to you by seven. Low Kick. Low Kick Esports. You gotta move your headset, man. Come on. There you Let go. Me. I can't see, bro. <laughs> <laughs> have you never worn a Santa hat before? Small price to pay. Uh, this man. I think I've worn them for like family Christmas photos. That's probably about it, to be honest. I'm not just like walking around <laughs> the, the streets with a Santa hat on. Maybe you should. Maybe hey. you should. It's a fashion. It's in this season. I should have known.
I don't. <laughs> I'm a boomer. I don't stay up with these kids' trends. Come on. Thanks for tuning in, guys. You are watching Five Before Christmas Three. That's why we are wearing Santa hats. So a couple days till Christmas. This is Tekken Seven Top Eight. I'm of course NT, joined by Puppy Storm, Chicago Tekken's very own Puppy Chicago Storm. Tekken.com's very own. Um, yeah, so we got uh, Linux versus and Afterburn. Afterburn coming up next on stream. I want to see Linux pull out Leroy. I really do. Linux put a lot of time into Both learning. Both these guys have pulled out Leroy. This, they have, but I really want to see Linux do it because he has labbed the character a lot. He put some grime and dirt into this character, and I want to see him pull it out in tournament setting. Personally, I like big boys, so I'd like to see Marduk. Linux will pulls out all the Marduk shenanigans. But we like might have a Leroy mirror. We'll see what they're thinking here. I don't want to call it too soon because Linux did use Marduk. He did use Leroy. And we saw Afterburn pull out Horong against Royal Heart. He did play Leroy against uh, Scoop in his previous Welcome matches. So honestly, it's all up in the air. Gonna, you know what's interesting? I, I thought about this a lot. Is Tekken is the one game where people practically never call for blind picks. You see it all the time in games like MK and stuff. The Tekken, everybody's just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't cool. think it's necessary because Tekken is such a balanced game that you're fighting your player rather than the character. There's almost always answers with every character to other characters' oppressive moves. Very rarely is there a character that you come across who can't answer some shenanigans. It's true. There are... There are no 8-2 matchups in this game. There's no 7-3 matchups. Maybe some 6-4s, possibly. Especially with the advent of Leroy, which you got your wish. Linux playing the Leroy. Look at Sugar. Look at Sugar. Guy is such a cool character. Sugar's cute. And Afterburn with the Huarong pick. Got the casual. Business casual. Fight. Oh, starting off with the Peacekeeper. Slow <laughs> break. Tries to catch him in the back one plus two. A little too far away. Linux switching to the wall pressure. Oh, and the throw on the other side. And Peacekeeper yeah, gets the wall splat. That was uh, that was half first round. <laughs> Fight. Catch them out of the air. Committed to the down forward one four. So he wasn't able to float the full combo. Linux is really looking for the counter hit confirms. Afterburn has a lot of wall carry. Wall. Oh, that's a big punish. Yeah, wall stand two to punish it. Good conversion for the wall. Yeah, punch him on wake up. Round three. Tying it up real quick there. So two very quick rounds. What Linux just did, which really surprised me, jab, jab into back one plus two. For some reason, back one plus two will hit grounded. Unscaled. Don't ask me why. Ooh, clips around a four, four, three. Oh, that was an interesting yeah, uh, switch. interaction. I feel like Linux was blocking the opposite side. Afterburn check in Linux's defense and Fight. really just poking holes in it constantly. I mean, that is Afterburn's oh. specialty. He loves just getting the schmicks and pressing buttons. Don't let your opponent even have the chance to play the game. He doesn't get the follow up on the 4-4-3. Four, four, just put down forward one. Oh, oh, Peacekeeper. Counter hit. Yeah, down one plus two. Take him to the wall here. Forcing the wall right L there. Sweep. One more. No throw break. Snap the neck. Take guaranteed damage. Locks the rage drive. Has still has a guess. Oh, man. There, there it is. Taps out. This is the 1-1. One, one. Both players on game point now. Linux looking for something here. Starts off with a health sweep. Afterburn, okay, chilling for right now. Big chilling. I don't necessarily like that Afterburn is relenting right now. He's gotten so much work out of these peacekeepers. It is insane. There we go. Starting the buttons again. Now this is terrifying because Linux does have rage. Oh, never mind. Yeah, Linux afraid to even parry there. I was going to say he still had Rage and he still had his Staff. 
Th I think that's the most important part. Right, we're gonna go straight to character select. To gonna go back to the Marduk. Thinking about it. Hovering. What's Big this mix? Boys. Big boys. Back to Leroy. He's mixing us. <laughs> All right, is he listening crowd to the does, crowd? Crowd does not want him to play Leroy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! I feel like we're getting yeah. some Price is Right crowd going on. <laughs> no, Marduk. No, Leroy. No, Marduk. Get ready for the next All right, he listens to the crowd. Going with the Marduk pick. Going to dumb mode of Sirio here. This was a random select due to TWT rules. Yes, the TWT season is over. We still adhere to the rules. It's a good rule set. Why wouldn't you? It is I'm a good rule set. You. All right, let's see if Afterburn knows how to break Fight. a tackle. <laughs> Linux already oh, starting off strong. Big counter hit. No throw break. How the turntables. Linux is now the oppressor. Afterburn sitting there on the defense. Afterburn trying to turn it around. Yeah, we got a block and then no throw break there. Oh, oh peacekeeper. Afterburn brings it all the way back that round. Fight. Two away from taking the set now. Down forward one. The sniper. Oh, misses the VTS cancel. Maybe a little bit of a cold hands from Lennox. He hasn't been playing Marduk. Yeah, full throw break. This stuff it feels unnatural nice for Lennox. Good throw break. No throw break there. He's gonna take the guaranteed damage afterward. Bonk. Oh, and the rage drive check the leg. Afterburn now on set point here. Fight. Linux has been going up in both of these rounds. Oh, it committed to the string and didn't it finish it. There's a tackle. Afterburn nice break. breaks. Afterburn, it's just mixing, but he gets counter hit by the second part of the string. Oh, again, drop the Viatudo cancel. Uncharacteristic. Counter hit. Can't the wall get the carry. Break. Yeah, not quite. Ooh. Last Linux. chance for Linux. Got to be very careful. And there it is. Hits him out of the blue burn. Takes it with a no round brown. Advancing through loser side of our bracket. So Linux will go out tied for fifth place, I believe, here. Unfortunately, wasn't able to make it happen with the Marduk pick. But now we're going to jump up to winner's side of our bracket and get our winner's finals action going. Shadow20Z disrupts very own against Panchan. I think I have Shadow in this one, if I had to say it. Put money on it. I mean, against anyone in Chicago, I would have Ch Shadow favored, I think. Um, <laughs> He's, he's our hometown hero. I would say Panchon is actually one of the better players to oh, match fantastic. against him. He's I great. do think he has a great chance to beat Shadow. But we'll see uh, what Panchon goes with. If he's going to stick with the Nina pick or if he's going to try to mix Shadow up with a uh, Lily or a Zafina or something like that. I think his Nina is too solid to try and switch off for Shadow. We saw in that set against Dilet. It was looking really good. It was... It was heavy. It was hard. Shadow also a man of many characters, so hopefully we'll see that Ganryu again. I, I enjoyed oh, watching that Ganryu play. Yeah, that Ganryu was some fun stuff. Just uh, all the counter hit headbutts into the, the charge. Almost looks like an Astroth bull rush. <laughs> Shout out to Soul Calibur, by the way. It's such a shame that Ganryu and Leroy came out on the same day because Ganryu got kind of overshadowed in the conversation. And Ganryu's a really part. good character. Yes. Like, he has a lot of great tools. His damage is among the highest in the game, along with Leroy. But Leroy came out and now no one cares.
Except Rick's stuff. <laughs> he plays very differently than a lot of different a lot of other characters. He's very he's very much a unique character with his own play style, which I love. I love unique characters like that. And so is Leroy. Um, you know, Tekken staff did an amazing job with these characters. Uh, Mishima Star might have gone too far in some places, but uh, just tweak some frame data here and there, it'll be okay. I think part of the problem is that Leroy is such a great original character, it overshadows the legacy because everyone already knew Ganryu yeah. from Tag 2, so it's not fresh, so to say, such as Leroy is. And it makes you wonder, um, with such a good original character, you know, we saw the trailer for Fakum Ram. How good is that character going to be? Like, is he also going to have insane frame data when he comes out? Cause... It's a good question <laughs> because both the characters that have come out for the Season 3 DLC haven't necessarily been busted, but they're ex they're strong. They're very strong. Leroy and Ganry are probably the strongest DLC pair we've seen um, out of pretty much any of them, to be quite honest. Uh, maybe, maybe Geese, but he wasn't really discovered as being so strong until much later into his life Very cycle. far really into, into season it. one. Yeah, really far into season one and season two. Like, uh, until people really started picking up that character and realized, hey, this character's really good and not that hard to play at this level. Um, and he got, just got very gross damage. Yeah. And back then, he didn't have any meter nerfs. Yeah. He got meter extremely fast, and it was extremely impressive. If people had recognized how good he was when he first came out and had full meter gain, I mean, Chikorin was one of the first people that was playing him at a really high level as well, but, like, it was a while before we saw a ton of success with him. Um, so these are, like, the first Leroy and Ganry or the first characters we're probably going to see having really good success at a high level right at release. I almost feel like people are sleeping on Zafina a little bit, too. Uh, more players are coming out and being strong with her. I think she was... Underreceived, so to say. Uh, like most people didn't care that she came out or didn't think she had anything special to her. But I think she has become stronger as more people have labbed and learned. Well, if you look at her from a legacy standpoint, she was crap. Straight up. She was a crap character, but they made a lot of nice adjustments to her in Tekken 7. And now you look at Pakistan, they'll tell you she's top tier character for sure. Um, with the crush properties she has. Man, that's. Her down forward too sometimes gets away with some shenanigans. Same well with her you know, uh, back launchers. one plus two, is it? The uh, the low where she like gets real yes, low to the ground. Yes, back one plus two where she just double hands forward. Yep. Yeah, that's a gross low. She gets away with a lot. Um, on top of having fantastic movement. Uh, yeah, you were saying before that she has the best back dash in the game. Actually, um, Aika Minamoto, combo artist on Twitter, posted a video earlier doing tool assisted back dash. That's video. actually how I learned about yeah. it. Was that. That video, at nine frames, she has the best backdash yeah, in the game. The most efficient, you know, backdash to distance and speed ratio. If you do it perfectly at nine frame intervals, she has the best backdash in the game, period. There's a lot of interesting stuff on that. If you don't, follow at Aika Minamoto on Twitter. She's been posting a lot of neat stuff lately. Uh, normally she posts some crazy combos, but some of this stuff she's messing around with tool assist did to prove how strong certain things are, like the back dashes and sidesteps, and how much you can really optimize combos. In general, if you want to get into Tekken, look at Tekken Twitter. A lot of people put a lot of good information about Tekken onto Twitter. But here we go, Panchon getting some crazy combos. That was, did you see what Panchon did? He ate a down forward three where Shadow was plus five, and then magic forward immediately after. It was a risky one, but getting the round because round of it. Two. He put Shadow right in the corner and mauled him alive. Yeah, Panchon looks like he's doing the same game that he did earlier against Dylit. Got the wall. Not able to convert. With the headbutt, no punish. Panchon's got the wall pressure again. Trains the headbutt. Good punish. That low, man, it's yeah. so gross. Trying to set up a down one plus two, and there we go. Shadow tying it up real quick. Round three. Fight. Tries to go for the hug, but Panch on not biting. Shadow 
is not as dominant in this matchup. It looks like Panchon definitely has the knowledge of Ganryu. As yeah. you said earlier, Panchon did play tag two, so I'm sure he fought a fair amount of Ganryu from that time. Now eating a raw down forward two into a full combo. Shadow pushing Panchon all the way to the wall. Oh, forward, forward, one plus two. Sidewall saves the life, but then a down forward three just close it out. Disrupt now on uh, Shadow now on game point. We are now in the winner's finals range, so this is a best of five, not three. Ooh, assault upper. Not sure if you meant to get that there. It's one of those moves that you accidentally club the input. It's kind of a messy one. Looks like Panchon is trying to play a lot smaller. Ooh, big counter hit. Panchon should be able to get the round here now and tie it up. Final round in game one. Winner's finals. Ooh, low nice parry. low parry to start it out from Shadow. Push him to the wall. Get the hands. Ooh, the hundred hands. Let's go. Takes a whole new meaning to putting hands on him. Now one touch will do it. Tries again with the roll, not biting. Wipe the floor. Can Panchon stay alive? No, with Hop taking steps away from it. Shadow taking game one, but it was close. Dang. A lot closer than I would have expected. Panchon looking real solid. Thinking about it. Does he want to go to stage select? Nope, just gonna choose to go into rematch. We will stick with Violet Systems here. I truly don't think the stage had any effect. They both shared the wall about equally. Time. Shadow squeaked it out. Round one. Fight. Yeah, see if Panchon can make some adjustments, and there's one. Nice sidestep. Gonna get full wall combo now. <laughs> Trying to keep the shadow at the wall. Doesn't want him to move out of there. Punishes a headbutt. Panchon being impressive as always. Just letting Riding. up a little bit. There we go. Catches him in the counter hit down uh, one plus two that time. Oh, oh that's a counter hit. That counter one. hit. That should be able to kill here. Dead. Yeah. Dead. Round two. Tries to spit on him a little bit too far. Spacing each other out yet again. And the down for three is way too tricky to punish. It pushes out just a little bit, so certain wall standing punishes don't actually work. Panchon showing great defense. Shadow does have life advantage. About equal now. 23 seconds left on the clock. Down for three into down for That's three. That's a big one. Assault upper. It does put Shadow into rage. This is scary. 11 seconds left. Clips him with the low. Panchon going blow for blow here now, tying it up again. The round count. Just the jabs. <laughs> Just one after one after one after one. Doing it You're again. You're not gonna duck, I'm gonna keep doing it. Take those plus ones. <laughs> and we are yeah, taking it Thunder very punch. slow. Take out the legs. Trying to set up these down four threes into down one plus two, but Panchon not biting, being very patient after the down four one three. Panchon has gotten so close with the bad breaths. Throw break. Throw break. That would have killed. Shadow does have the rage. Panchon just outside. Clap oh, him. Flaps the forward forward one plus two and just spend it. This is a long rage art too. You gotta hold that. It's time to think. And then just sit on him like T-Hawk. Special ending. Round All right. Fight. You know, I now. thought Armor King's Rage Art was long, but man, I bet if you time those out, 
Ganyu's is probably way longer. Or you just get the special animation if you had to close it out with it. And so it ends up being even longer. Now Panchon working on a perfect. Oh, there we go. Down forward three. Get some damage on the board for Shadow. Looking like we're going to repeat of the first game. There we go. Panchon, relentless pressure. Ties it up again. Now taking game it, point, both players. Taking it right back into the final round. It's been keeping this so close. See, that's what I mean. He, yep. he actually blocked the down forward three, but the wall standing four was too far to punish. Panchon just taking every little poke that he can get. He's got Shadow down to half life, almost yeah. at full life himself. Nice life lead, 27 seconds on the board. Close to putting Shadow into rage, one more hit. No throw break, one touch. There it is, Panchon tying it. Hit. One to one in winner's finals. Is that a reverse three rounds for Panchon? Nice no, it was not. No, it wasn't, nope. my bad. It's close, but not quite. But tying up the games now and going straight back into Violet System again, both players content to just go blow for blow, taking it back to Violet Systems over and over. Time to die. Round one. Fight. Not seeing many launchers from either players, just all these little pokes. It's true, we're not seeing any raw launchers being thrown out in neutral. Yeah, playing a very small Tekken. 20 seconds. Oh, there's there finally is. a bad breath. He's going to get the wall off that. That's going to hurt. This puts Panch on a really good position. Got to be careful. Shadow does have rage, and he does know how to use it. Nice get off break. me. Oh, Clap four, him. Four, plus two. Doesn't put Panch on in range, just outside. Nice blocks. Yeah, we can kill off that. If you block that low, Candry is as good as dead. Fight. Clap him again. Getting a lot of work out of that 4 4 1 plus 2. Put the hands on him. No, not quite. Thunder Punch at the wall gets a guaranteed follow up. And Shadow is slapping Panch on. I think that's the first dominant round we've seen in this entire set. <laughs> oh, we tried to go for three down four threes in a row, and Panchon said, no, I'm going to low parry that one. Can't take that much mental damage. Oh, down four two, all right. We're back into the mid screen, back into our small Tekken. Counter him at four. Lore. Unfortunately traded, so there was no combo to be had. Panchon showing off his movement capabilities. Sweeps the floor. Now Panchon up in the set. Two rounds to one. Can you take this game? Panchon just standing there. <laughs> no movement. Sending a message. Ooh, counter hit down four. Gets the wall off of this. Trying to get him with a death fist is a wall bounce move. Clap him. Perfect round Perfect. shadow. Third game that we have gone into final round. You couldn't ask for a closer set. <laughs> really this good. is literally as close as it gets. Ooh, catches him out the orbital. Good carry to the wall. Oh man, he is just being oppressive. What a bully. Somebody stop oh, him. Finally blocks it. But with Spring the kick. pixel life left, what can Panchon do here? He's working on it. Put Shadow into rage. One more hit, the blonde oh! bomb can the X! Panchon squeaking out game three. Shadow had like 90% life left. Panchon with a pixel and brought it. Any raw back. hit from Shadow would have killed Panchon, but he brought it all the way back, taking game three. That has got to be big momentum for Panchon. And now we're going straight into a rematch again. Time to die. 
Anshan trying to punch his ticket into Winterside Grand Finals. I'm amazed that he's stayed as solid as he is, considering how big of a bully Shadow's trying to be with all the down four threes, all the claps. I'm surprised by Shadow's commitment to the Ganryu as well, but here we go. Again, this 4-4-1-2 four, four, every time just seems to be working out for him. Down 4-3, close the round out. Round two. Fight. Neither of these players have really taken the advantage over the other. They've been trading rounds every single game. Claps in. How is he making these connect every time? Clap him again. Ow. It's the wall, not oh. quite. That was oh. a really good combo adjustment. It ends up closing the round out there. And now on game point for Shadow. Clap him again. This is absurd, actually. <laughs> Thunder punch at the ground, counter hit on wake up. Nice little combo from Panshan. Back to the wall for yep. Shadow. You just got out and they said nope, taking you right back to the wall again. There we have it, our first no round brown of this entire set. Shadow taking it 2-2. Two -two. Panchon taking a second to think about it, but no, no, we're not taking a second to think. We're just going straight back into rematch. Violet systems the whole way through. So the winner of this game will move on into grand finals. Round one. Fight. Kind of magic, magic four. four. He's going to convert the full combo. Oh, not quite. Blonde bomb through. Salt upper gets punished. Panchon taking round one of game five. Game five. He needs two more. Can Panchon upset and beat Shadow here? As you said earlier, it's been about as close as it could possibly be this entire set. But Panchon is now running away with it. Ooh, tries to go for the tech trap to jump over four. One more hit for Panchon. We'll close it out. Shadow's got 30 seconds to play with. It's clipped by the low. Panchon putting himself at game and set point right now. Oh, that time the chop got blocked, finally. Yeah, Panchon is looking extremely solid. There's a launch. Down for two. Let's go to the wall. Is he going to get a perfect, perfect no nope, spring kick. kick? Shadow in rage. This is his last chance here. Plenty of time in the world. Put hands on Panchon. Okay. Oh, on the slide will do it. Panchon with a no round brown. Punches his ticket into Winterside Grand Finals over Shadow 20Z. So game four, Shadow took a no round brown himself, then Panchon answered straight back game five. Wow. Took a no good. round brown of himself. Great stuff from Panchon there. Looking really nice. I got to say, I'm surprised. And I did say Panchon would be the player to match hand to hand with Shadow, and he did. 3 2, I mean, it by no means was a blowout, but it was well won. Shadow stayed committed to that Ganryu pick, and for better or for worse, now he's in loser's bracket. Um, so he'll sit in loser's finals, uh, waiting for this next couple matches to play out, so he'll get a little bit of time to rest and think about it. I don't know if he's going to stick to Ganryu for the whole time, but I, though, I respect it if he wants to. Um, that's some commitment. But Let's see, looking like loser's semis, Odell versus Afterburn, did we? Is that right? Oh, uh, yeah. So thanks for joining us, guys. Tekken 7 Top 8 action. We're actually in Top 4 now. Um, this All is right. Low Kick Esports bringing you Fight Before Christmas. Oh, wait. Uh, there we go. Ch -ch -ch -ch. I, I know my camera positioning. I'm Puppy Swarm. You can follow me at Puppy Swarm. NT at NT1Evolution. 
Also follow Low Kick at Low Kick Esports. Also follow the channel, subscribe if you can. All support is appreciated. Also follow ChicagoTekken.com, ran by Puppy Swarm himself. At ChicagoTekken on Twitter. Uh, we have a synergistic relationship with Low Kick Esports. Um, so if you follow both of us, you surely will not miss anything uh, if you are a Tekken lover and love the Chicago Tekken scene in particular. Also, shout outs to the Ignite Gaming Lounge for giving us this nice venue. It's yeah, great out here. We're here in Skokie, Illinois. This is their second location. There's one down in uh, uh, Chicago on Elston, right? And then this one's up in Skokie. Beautiful event space that we got here. So. They also had a pretty nice turnout for Tekken. I believe it was a 49-man bracket. A lot of people showed up last minute at the door. Um, That's Chicago for you. For whatever reason, everyone likes to show up last minute. And it was a tough bracket. Everybody who made it into top eight seriously had to beat up on some sharks to make it here. Especially in pool one. Pool one was the killer pool of our two pools. Yeah, in pool one, we had, what was it? John Hammer, Shadow. Uh, Swagmaster, mm -hmm. uh, Odell, Epic, Linux. Who am I missing? Plenty of players. I'd have, I'd have to check Smash GG to remember. But, but either way, it was just destruction. John Hammer was the one in that pool who, um, you know, that, that was an upset to not see him make top eight there. Um, and then the other pool with uh, Junior not making top eight. Couple big upsets. But it's bound to happen. When you have this many good players in a geography. And um, it honestly is all thanks to all the players coming out to locals. We say this all the time. Come out and support your locals. Shadow, Junior, Linux, John, Epic, Odell. These are all top players. So when these guys come out, the skill floor only comes up because that's all who we're fighting. We have to fight them every single week. So yeah. do we just keep losing? No. We grow, we level up, we, we contest. It speaks to the strength of our of our region here in Chicago when you have Shadow who made TWT finals, performed very well, won Red Bull Conquest finals Welcome out there the in California. But we still have players here locally who can beat him at our monthlies. Like, yeah, he he's got I mean he's he's favored to win all the time here and he's won he won three Mission monthlies in a row. But he is not undefeated. He's been well, taken down by the likes of Badonkey Zonk. He's been taken down by the likes of, uh, you know, John Hammer before. He's lost to Pusheen before. Shin Pusheen, who couldn't make it today. Unfortunately, Pusheen not with us today. I mean, there is so much talent here that can take down even the top level players. Last Super Saturdays, we saw Emily, Emily yes. beating Cuddlecore Emily in a beat reset. Emily Cuddlecore. Cuddlecore, beat our Cuddle other top player reset. in the Chicago region. Even she gets beat at our monthlies. Yeah, it was wild. This is how strong our region is, guys. Um, and Red Bull Conquest, for example, we had a bunch of guys come down from Wisconsin, Detroit. Only like one St. Detroit Louis. guy made it to top 24. I'm pretty it, sure Missouri guys came up. Yeah, we saw. Yeah, we saw Rick the Ruler make top 24. We saw D, uh, um, L Train make top 24. But it was mostly Fight. Chicago guys defending the turf and gals. <laughs> So Adele opting to go with Eliza for the Blue Wizards semi-final. Yeah, nice. Afterburn being oppressive as always, pressing all the buttons. It's an interesting choice. I wonder what the mentality is with Odell uh, choosing, to, you know, whether to start with Geese or Eliza. Because we know he, both of them are very strong, and you mentioned that he was playing around with Leroy, so. Yeah, he has not opted to pull out Leroy yet in top eight. I wonder if he feels like he was able to do that because in pools he had a little bit more life to play with. Oh, nice cancel there. Take it to the wall. Wall Gets bounce. Wall bounce. Ooh, weird conversion, but able to close the round out regardless. Round three. Fight. Throw break and side switch. Afrin's trying to find his oh, way in, but nice gets clipped. Oh, the meter. Clipped by the EX dive kick. Goes straight to the wall. Flip Got him dive over. Kick combos at the wall. Nice. Here we go. Ooh, almost readjusted, able to finish it off, but no. Afrin's got a second chance now. Dive kick again. Round Smart four. to spend the meter there just to make sure he got enough damage. Yeah. 
Afterburn is finding a very hard time trying to get in. Odell on game point, but on a little bit of a life deficit here. Doesn't quite have a meter yet. Ooh, Immediately spends it. Yeah, we're seeing him get these EX dive kicks. Get decent mileage out of it. He really would like to hit the wall, though. Yes. One more hit. Rage drive plus frames. Ducks the throw. Odell taking game one now. You win. I could use a drink. Afterburn often goes straight into the rematch. Unrelenting. And then she takes a nap. Sir. This is a place for, yeah, this is a place for children. We don't need motorcycles <laughs> in here. So this is a Wendy's. All right, I have to burn. Pushing Odell all the way to the wall. This combo here. Punish from Afterburn. Wall splat takes round uh, one. Quick 15 second round for him. Same thing happened Fuck. last game, and then Odell turned it right around. Let's see if Afterburn can break that history. Punish. Nice low, low parry. parry. Odell opting not to throw out any fireballs in neutral, actually. That's yeah, gonna be a splat. You gotta watch out for that at the wall. Throw connect. Okay, he's gonna break connect. damage afterwards. One more mix up from either player. Do glide three and then do glide two. Round three. Fight. Oh, oh unblockable. unblockable. Breaks the throw. Side switch as well. Yeah, especially against Farong, you gotta make sure you got throw breaks on point because he gets that guaranteed back three afterwards. Oh man. Afterward is shredding him alive! Round that was some dominance. Fight. Afterburn trying to tie it up here. Needs one more round. I'm not sure why Odell opted to spend that meter right there. Seems like a, an unnecessary FADC. Trying to put him in the mix, I guess. Oh, oh man, getting clipped by strings. Gets the wall. Big damage. Low nice parry. Low parry but, oh, drops the combo. Nothing after the low parry. He does have one meter to work with. Breaks the throw. There it is. Gets yep. a splat. Gonna go to the other wall. Oh no, drops his dive kick. Ooh, no throw break. Afterburn does have rage now. Gotta be careful here. Oh, whiff punishes. Dive. Oh, dive kick, all right. Do it again. One. Didn't work the first time. I'm gonna do it again anyway. No one ever expects the second one. Over the, the yeah, low jab. The Big wall damage. Wow, that was a chunky combo. Uses the through. meter to get out of there. I can't blame him. That was a lot of pressure. He's got a big deficit. Fishing for a counter hit. One hit will kill Odell. Oh, the power crush but he manages to jump over. No throw, throw break. break. That's gonna put Afterburn in rage. Both players in rage. Good oh, block. Oh, nice block on the slide. Afterburn tying up the games. And good thing for him because that would have taken him out of the tournament had he not blocked there. Odell thinking about it. What does he want to do? Thinking heavily on it. So you go to character select. Looks here. like his brother was talking to him, maybe giving him some pointers. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7. Well Ren. Dell still hovering Eliza, thinking about it. Going with the geese. Man, really indecisive here. He's really thinking about it. He's no, he dots back in the Eliza pick, which means he still can pick the stage. Go G Core Pelipad. 
So it looks like G Corp Helipad is the stage for Odell. He picked that last time. Yeah. Everybody's got their one stage that they call home. What's your home? Uh, usually it's the uh, Bannon Temple. I like that stage a lot. I like the aesthetic of that stage. That is a cool stage. How about you? I don't have a home. You don't have a. You said everybody has a home, and you I don't. Have a home. Though I'm homeless. You're a in this nomad. Game. I choose between a lot of different stages. I don't have one that I tend to move towards. I'm a nomad. Round one. Fight. <laughs> All right. So let's see what Epic told Odell. Maybe he get some adjustments. After pushing towards the wall and gets the break, can't hit the second wall. Scaling on that, not able to finish the whole thing, but regardless. Man, Odell really fishing for those counter hit down fours, but this is gonna hurt at the wall. I gotta guess, again, down four. Keep sweeping the legs. Afterburn pushing like normal. Barely misses the back three. Good throw break. Favorable side switch for Odell here. Still has one meter to play with. There it is, spent. Yeah, you gotta watch out for that. The down three into this meter spin. At the wall, it hurts so bad. We are not seeing him break the command throws here. No one plus two, so Ooh, jabs out jabs the unblockable. Up. Oh, he's able to convert a combo. Oh. Crouch jabs to get the second round now, and Odell on set point. Trying to close out with the no round Brown to put himself into the ooh, this final. Ooh, floated him out before he could dive kick there. Spends the meter to get the EXDP, get out of the corner. So back dashing right back into it. Nice block from Afterburn. Afterburn does still have a big life advantage, but there's a low carry. That's yeah, a great start for Odell. He's going to spend the meter to get the wall carry. Oh. And now Odell about to close it out. He doesn't have any meter. Oh, oh but he's still there it is. It. Odell closes out the no round Brown over Afterburn. 2 1 through loser semis now. But he may have won the loser semis, but guess what he's going into next? Oh boy. Shadow 20Z waiting so. for him in the loser's finals. So congrats to Afterburn. He will go out in fourth place. Odell making it through to loser's finals. Up against Shadow 20Z, disrupts very own. Man, this is gonna be a hard match for Odell. We'll see if Shadow sticks with the Ganryu pick. I think hard statement is an, or hard match is an understatement. I think this is going to be the largest mountain that Odell could possibly climb here in the tournament. I mean, Shadow was already such a strong player, and then before TBT Finals, he was out there in South Korea, uh, labbing it up and putting in work. I mean, he was training with some of the best. He's only gonna get better. That's the scary thing. I mean, you talk about potential. Odell has mountains of potential, but Shadow is already Shadow's a young it man at the highest himself. level. Yeah, he's definitely one of the young bloods, and he's at the top of the top. As you said earlier, he went to the TWT finals, and he did well. He, I believe he beat Ni nee in his mm -hmm. pool. He beat Ni, nee, the the people who called it the Tekken God himself. So now the real question, is he sticking with Ganryu? I don't know, man. I mean, this is a loser's final, so we do have another first to three situation. So he does have a bit of time to play with it. But at least against Panchon, it was very even. But would it have been more favorable for him to go back to the trusted Claudio or even the Zafina? I don't know. We'll never know now. Unless he makes it back into face Panchon again. Nope. Stick it with the Ganryu. I respect the commitment. And Odell taking the geese pick. Then we're going to the Forgotten Realm. First time we've seen it in top eight. 
It's interesting, we, you know, we just saw Odell commit to Eliza, which worked out for him against Afterburn. Now switching to the Geese in this matchup. Eliza is often regarded as low tier, so I'm not surprised that he would pick Geese. I can't imagine that you'd want to pick a lower tier going into Shadow. Geese is still good. Geese is great. But Gan Ganryu is no slouch himself. Come on. I think Geese is a, a very well-balanced character now. Used. He's in a good spot. For a 2D character, I think he is in a great spot. We just need to get a uh, Akuma and Leroy to that level now. <laughs> Trying to go for the legs right away. Well, no White Claws misses. So the question I have for Odell, he is a young man. I don't know if he played Tag 2. Does he have legacy knowledge of Ganryu? Or did he have to lab Ganryu? Has he not lab Ganryu? Ooh, Death Fist through the parry. Counter hit. Going through the floor. Doesn't have a meter yet, so can't do any max mode confirms. Oh, hell yeah, hit. guaranteed afterwards. Round two. Shadow taking the first round and denying Odell a meter in the process. Clap him. Do you have a clap counter in your head? I think that's like the 13th clap we've seen. There Shadow are land. way too many. Uh, I do not have enough fingers and toes for that at this point. Wrist raw down for two connects. Get to the walls. Going downstairs. Gonna put hands on him. Now Adele gets floated out. Spring kick works. Punch the legs. Ooh, doesn't go for the throw. Doesn't decide to duck. Still has rage. Chops the legs, get the throw. One pixel left now. Nice the low parry on the wake up kick. Great read by Odell. Fight. Man, we have had nothing but respect in this top eight. A lot of spacing in the first 10 seconds, but Shadow clapping yet again and breaks the floor, puts hands on him. You have no floors left now. Oh, stomp! The stance three, it does a crap ton of damage for a low. It hurts. Odell does have one bar, got a lot to work with, already starting at the life advantage. I'll suspend the bar. Oh, Power crush through. Four, three plus four, let's go. Yep, punish the headbutt. Breaks the one throw. Oh, that should kill. Yeah, let's tie it up. He gets a meter off that as well. Final round. Odell is keeping up a shadow. Nice sidestep on the Jake and now Looks like Shadow's trying to go back towards the mid-screen, but Odell gets the counter hit and the pickup. Doesn't have a meter to spend, but gets the other wall. Big damage. Yeah, he's not likely gonna get it before this round ends either. He's gotta make it happen without meter. He's gonna take the damage here. Jake oh, and connects! connects to Taking game one in losers finals. Give in to your fears. And now Shadow going straight back in rematch. Staying on Forgotten Realm. Staying on Ganryu. He is committed. He believes. These games have been close though. Holy cow. What do we call Come that? On. Good what? We call that good ass Tekken. Some good ass Tekken, everybody. Jesus, you're gonna break the floor in the with, with the intro. That would be so <laughs> tight. Why don't they do that? Oh, a nice block. Full crouch down forward two for the punish. Breaks the floor. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Nice. Wasn't able to punish the parry in time. There is a parry. There's a parry, and he's gonna get the wall combo. Nice. 
go through launch, the floor again. The wall stand too, going through the floor. Tries to get on the slide. Oh man, that's a big punish. Yeah, ducked under the headbutt. Going downstairs too, he still has a screw. Gets a bar. Yeah. This isn't gonna kill, but this will put him very close. close to death. Oh, oh it ran it's right stuff. into the string. Yeah, down 4 1 4 will close it out for Shadow. Now, with no floors left, the 2 1 2 eats it. Gets the wall. Big hit. That death fist. It's very good. Andrew's counter hit death fist. It'll just take you straight past Rage. It would just kill Odell there. <laughs> Odell really likes the unique wall action for Geese. The flying body press. Shadow clearly made some kind of adjustment here up two rounds now. Clap doesn't connect this time. Down but he gets the down four two. Wall damage. Ugh, chunky oh, and the resplat. Put hands on yeah, him. Yeah, gets the full hundred hands. Step on him too. He tried to get him with the thunder punch. Down four two plus three at the wall, which gets a guaranteed follow up. But the the roll away got away from it. But Shadow getting the round anyway. The no round brown now. Tying up the game count. G core pel pad, G core pel pad. I'm calling it. Eight random. Uh, okay. You got schmix. I got schmix. I got schmix too, and I didn't even say anything. <laughs> so we're back to our violent systems. You know, if Odell had picked this stage, I would almost say that's mental damage since Shadow <laughs> lost to Panchan on this stage. Take you back here. <laughs> Remember, you lost on this stage. Remember the phantom this pain. Dos Boy. Round one. I really like that introduction, actually. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> yeah, punish the HUD bat. Uh, I think it might have 13 on block. <laughs> Oh, okay, it trades the 4 plus 1 plus 2. That is unfortunately in Shadow's favor. The big death fist. That's low. Ooh, doesn't need the hug. Doesn't let her rip. He doesn't have meter for it. Breaks the 1 Bro plus break. 2. Tries to blow Bro 1 plus 2 again. again. Oh, that was counter hit. Oh, wasn't able to convert the combo. Oh, that was risky. And this will kill Bonk. That forward one plus two and out of stance is guaranteed after that. That's chunky damage. Clap him for the whiff punish. Yeah, if you can do that, it's, you know, frame perfect. It's, it is 13 frames. It's pretty nasty. And <laughs> shadow loops. it. We got loops in high tech. <laughs> Facing each other out yet again. 30 seconds left. Clap him! He's just able to make the read every time. It just gets it out so quickly to thwart the aggression with the launcher, the 4 4 1 plus 2. He's fishing for it. Clearly, he's onto something. Oh man, he just runs into the clap. Maximo confirmed. Is he going to get the second wall? Yes, he does. Yeah, doesn't adjust the combo in time to get the wall combo, but the running one will connect. He's in a favorable life position now. One straight hit will kill Shadow, but any straight hit from Shadow could kill Odell as well. Oh, the salt upper! Yo, he's dead. Oh, he's not Oh! And another no Ron Brown. The salt upper. That was a grip of damage. Odell going to stage select again. Is G Corp Helipad again, or is he gonna choose G Corp Helipad? Okay, G choose G Corp Helipad this time. Going home. Get ready but not home, home, because you know he's got to go into grand finals before he goes home. This is true. This is true. He's got to have that awkward car ride home because his brother, uh, well, he eliminated his own brother out of the tournament, so. 
But if he wins, I think Epic will be okay with that. I'm already sure it's nothing but love between those two. Already secured himself a top three finish here in a stacked bracket, so. He does at least get his entry fee back. Come on. All righty. This might be amusing. We just saw Shadow reverse two games, double no round Brown, so Ozell. Clearly on the back foot here, he needs to make some adjustments. Odell starting small. He's getting the hands put on him. Parries nice the death He's is. get the wall break here. Take him to the other wall. Big damage. Good throw break. He's almost got a meter. He'd love to be able to hold it for the next round. Ooh, no punish on the duck throw. Got to be careful here. Almost too broken. Break. Oh, he's dead. Round two. Always got to watch your legs against Ganry. He does have powerful lows to begin with. And then when he's got rage. Oh, man. Odell needs to find something big here, some kind of adjustment. Spends the max mode, he's not really gonna get anything out of it. I'm smelling a clap. Ah, there was a clap. To fish for it. I saw it. Flips him out of the air, picks him up, that does get wall. Punishes the whip parry. Oh, gets a parry, okay. He's got rage. Can he adjust this combo? He's gonna go ahead and spend the deadly rave. This Not will be kill. big damage regardless. Ooh, Hits him the with the mid. Claws. No law on the claw. Dodell showing signs of life. That's the first round he's gotten out of the last eight. Hits him with the J, can't push him to the wall. Spends a meter. Not gonna get anything out of it. He ducks the second into the moon slicer. Good patience from Shadow there. Yeah, he can't test Shadow when it comes to knowledge on strings. No throw break. Tries to get him with another throw, but stays grounded for Odell. One plus two broken. Oh no, yeah. just too far out of range. Shadow launches and gets the kill for round three. Set and game point. Shadow he got clapped. Looking to get his run back against Panchon. Spends meter again. He has gotten nothing out of his meter this whole game. Now yeah, Dell's gotta be very careful now. He's got no meter. Shadow has the round advantage. One plus two finally goes through. Oh, he tried to parry. Flying body press. Yeah, get me out of that corner. Good nice block, block on the down to He launches it. He's going to take it to the wall. He should be able to kill here. Oh, no, Not the sidewall right. saves Spring lives. Kick. Flying body press. It's close. Got to be careful seconds. here. Odell has Raw max mode. Six seconds left. Odell needs He's got to find something. Oh, shot. no, there my God, he gets it through. Oh, Odell stays Lord. alive. Spends a meter in the process, though. Hey, man, he stayed alive. It's all worth it. Slight life lead now. He's got such wall pressure going on. Headbutt into the wall. This is going to tie up the life advantage. Tries to clap. Odell's oh. almost gonna get him oh. right here. Oh, doesn't break the two. Odell's on his last legs. Oh, no He's gotta win this to stay alive. Max Spends mode. Meter. He has to. Blocks the down forward three. Nice. No max mode, no meter. He's not gonna get it. And no. The down forward one. That'll do it. Shadow will now get his run back against Panchon, but now through with loser side of grand finals. Good stuff to Odell going out in third place. Congrats, Odell. He had well, a very well, nice run there. Well played. I mean, yeah. he was facing Shadow 20Z. 
the, he's no slouch. That's got to be the hardest match that he could have possibly faced tonight. Oh. And to go almost 3-2 against him, man, like... It was a very impressive run through losers. Uh, absolutely. But now we've got Panchon. See if he can do the impossible and still keep it alive on winner's side. You know, he's got a whole six games to work with. Shadow on the back foot now. You know he doesn't want to use those six games if he doesn't have oh, to. Oh, absolutely not. But that Nina has looked been looking really solid. The question is, does Shadow stick with Ganryu? I, I don't want to coach him, <laughs> but he's already played a set against him. But he did lose that set. Is Claudio better? Is Ganryu better? Is Safina better? Shadow's a much better player than me. So. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I can't fault you for saying that one. But also, Panchon's had time to watch him play. Shadow had to play all those games against Odell just now. Yep, while Panchon was big chilling, it's waiting more for the data. grand finals. It's more data collection. Shoutouts to desyncing those pads. All right. Truth will be revealed. What's it going to be? Once again, folks at home just tuning in. This is our grand finals of Fight Before Christmas 3. Shadow 20Z versus Panchon Shadow coming from the loser's bracket. Yeah, it might surprise you, but Panchon put Shadow into losers on winner's finals. So now he's having to reset the bracket if he wants to win this tournament. And sticking with the Ganryu, at least, at least in game one, we're seeing Ganryu. Going to Sook, smallest stage. Get ready for the next I feel like Sook is going to be a lot scarier for Panchon than it is Shadow. Ganryu wall pressure is pretty disgusting. As you kept saying, the Ganryu Death Fist is a grip of damage, and it's a wall bounce. He gets some extra conversions at the wall. His uh, down forward 2 plus 3, the Thunder Punch, the legs. If you do it at the wall, you get a guaranteed follow-up. If you do it in neutral, you get nothing. So there is there, it's some additional options that he has when he's got that wall pressure on his side. Round one. Fight. All right. Man, it's already abusing the down four threes. Fishing for a down one plus two counter hit. It does go straight into the hug on counter hit and gets bonus damage on the follow up. Panchon gets a wall spike. Good readjustment to try and get the other wall. Low splat on the other wall, so isn't able to finish it off. Good throw break. break in the side switch. Good nice block. Blocks, and that'll kill him. Yes. Round two. Panchon taking round one. Panchon not afraid to just dash in front of Shadow's face. Oh, nice whip punish on the headbutt. Back suited. And take him all the way to the wall. Big damage. Oh, into the back. That hurts. That was so much damage. You got to crouch there. You got to hold down back. That's all you can do. Oh, hits oh, him out of the blonde bomb. Out. Ooh, Wipe the floor. Round Panchon on game point now. Fight. Power Crush gets punished. Panchon being as compact as he can possibly be right now. There's an orbital. He was fishing for magic fours. The orbital connects. Oh, Big upper. Not quite enough, but it's real close. Close it out with the jab and Panchon, the no round brown. Shadow, what are you gonna do? I think this is 
an amazing start for Panchon, sending a message already. Shadow opting to go into the character select. Do you think he's finally gonna pull out Claudio? Safina. Safina. Never mind. But Panchon has finally made Shadow switch characters. We saw this uh, at Red Bull qualifiers in Chicago that um, Shadow played Safina the entire tournament until Badonkey Zonk forced the Claudio swap. I think this is the best time that he could have switched characters. He's already lost one game. He can only lose two more. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be down two games when you switch. Because then you've locked yourself into the entire run back. Until the reset, that is. Until the reset. And that's a lot of games to win. A lot of rounds to win in a grand finals. So now Panchon having to work with a new matchup. Round one. I believe the only other subpoena he fought was Royal Heart, who he did win over in winner side of our pools. Interruption. This has got to be the most compact Tekken I've seen in a, quite a long time. Multiple games where each round we're going 30 seconds with both players being above 70%. Shadow chipping away the legs. Nice life lead now. Seems to draw a couple orbitals, but that's you know the riskiest launch we've seen. That's safe. We're not seeing anything unsafe being thrown out. Ooh, it stuffs him out. Shadow getting round one, stuffing the blue blonde bomb. Yeah, Shadow didn't have to take any risks with that big of a life lead. So far, the switch into Zafina has been paying off greatly for Shadow. As I say, that Magic 4 connects, though, but drops the combo. Still Panchon with a life lead here. No throw break. Puts Panchon in rage. Nice. Low parry. This can close it out. He's got the rage. He's just going to spend it for the rage art and close the round out does not want to take any risks here. This is also a long rage art, so it gives him a couple minutes to think. Round three, fight. As we mentioned earlier, uh, Safina, best backdash in the game. You can see she's getting mass distance. Big counter hit there, Shadow on a huge life lead. Panchon not quite out of it yet, gets a, a nice launcher. Step into the down forward too. Scout rage, but no, just get clipped by a down forward one. Round four. Now Shadow on game point, trying to tie up this grand finals. Good launch for Panchon, that's big. Take him to the wall, Blonde Bomb to finish it off. Shadow not committing to any low strings, respects Panchon enough. Easy punish, nice blocks from Panchon. Panchon working the shins, Blonde Bob through, ties up the round count. Panchon's defense has been fantastic against Shadow. Of all the times Panchon decides to use his big launchers, I think all of them have connected. Yeah, we see it mostly off of a sidestep, uh, you know, creating a whiff punish. Shadow's not going to whiff himself. Panchon will create the whiff. And Shadow has been getting a lot of mileage off of those lows. He's been working Panchon's shins all game long. Out even on life. Panchon with a slight life lead here. Definitely got it now, but it's down forward too. It hits the wall just barely, and then Shadow ties it up, taking game two here. And she's just going to crawl right on out of there. Ugh. Terrifying. 
Panchon staying on Hammerhead, going straight into rematch. And every game we've seen from these two, both in winners finals and now in grand finals, has gone. It's been a nail biter. Fight. I can't necessarily say Panchon needs to make any big adjustments. As of right now, he needs to be aware of his shins. Yeah, his defense has been really solid, and uh, he's getting the punish when he blocks the lows. So, what more can you say? About even on life. Seems like we're finally getting to the point where we're trying to get into each other's faces. After Shadow, it should end the round. Yeah, that'll do it. Round two. Fight. Shadow is working for game two here. I'm sorry, game three. Wants the reset. Floats out the orbital. Really good damage thanks to that wall, but Panchon clipping away the legs of the wine opener. Counter hit. I think Shadow is building too much momentum right now. And the back one plus two to close the round out. Now Shadow on game point, trying to take the lead. If Shadow works the no round round, I think this will be almost detrimental for Panchon. Shadow's getting a lot more bold with his moves. Massive damage off that the counter hit Scarecrow four. Taking all the way to the wall and getting Oh, that's another counter, counter hit. That's going to close it out of the no-round Brown again. You win. This is bad for Panchon. Everyone always says if you go 1-1 one, one in Grand Finals, the person who wins the third game gets the momentum. This is now critical for Panchon to try and win this next game. I mean, it's not momentum. He's just hitting the ground running. That's a double no-round Brown from him. Uh, this Tina pick. Very strong. Panchon opted to go back into Souk. If Panchon does not bring it back together, Shadow will reset this bracket with Zafina. Yeah, Panchon may have adjusted too much, gotten too used to the Ganryu pick, and now Zafina picks is catching him off guard. Shadow has gotten way too comfortable with this matchup. He's gotten very bold with all his options. No fear behind any of his mutt presses. Complete dominance. Yeah, he's pressing all the buttons in the world. Not afraid of what Panchon can do. Reading everything gets the counter hit. Says, no, it's not your turn yet. You still can't have your turn. Tries to catch with the counter hit on Wake Up. Steps right around the jabs. Panchon getting a counter hit of his own. Flip him over. Ooh, and a hop kick. That stubby Zafina hop kick. When it works, it works. Counter hit magic four. This will carry to the wall, but Panchon drops it. Might be a bit of metal damage on Panchon's side. He's just not pressing as many buttons as he was when he first started the set. Yeah, he's not able to get his turn back as easily against the Safina pick. Between Safina having uh, a lot of moves that leave her just only very slightly minus, and a straw down for too. We'll close out the round now. Shadow has the download. Shadow looking to close. Fight. This fourth game and reset the bracket with a no round brown. Big counter hit. Three no round browns in a row. So Panchon now with the wall pressure. Got to keep Shadow there. Put him in the blender. Patient from Panchon. Not sure that's what he needs, though. There it Ooh, is. There's, there's a, a good launch. start. Okay, we're gonna deny the no round Brown. KO. First round taken in round nine four. rounds. Fight. He needed this. Yeah, that's very big for his mental to get that round there, but 
as I say that, counter hit low from Shadow. Not quite wall, but close to it. Counter hit. Panchon does get the wall, ends it with the Blonde Bomb. Same as last round, got Shadow on the exact same wall. Likely favoring Shadow now, does not commit to the wall stand one, two. Floats, Floats out. out. One launch from either player will kill. Oh, wall stand two from Shadow to close it out. Now resetting the that bracket. You win. This Athena pick has been this is fantastic for him. I mean, it's he's only given up one round in the past three games. I don't know what else you could say, aside from that being the best possible choice he could have picked. To drop only one round across 10 rounds? Brutal, absolutely brutal. And Panchon opting to stay on Suk here with the rematch. And now both players in loser's bracket. Let's start this. Round one. Shadow has all the momentum in the world. Again, Shadow staying as confident as can be. Just such a dominant presence. Give the power crush to finish it. Doesn't get the perfect, but use the armor move was great to take that round. Low parry, here we go. Take your momentum back, Panchon. Take him to the wall. Flip him over. Commanding round so far for Panchon. Can he close this one out? Doesn't have to take any big risks. He's got such a big life lead, but gets Man, the nice big launch. Yeah, and there we go, the Blonde Bomb to close it out. Round three. Fight. No counter hit hugs today. Manchon slowly adjusting to the matchup, but is it too little too late? Shadow's got about half life lead right now. Very early on, 40 seconds left. Line openers, looking for a counter hit there. Pop kick. kick. Told you when it works, it works. And I'll close it out the back one, just frame. Round four, fight. Shadow looking to take game one of our reset. Good steps from Panchon. Oh, but gets caught by the second part of while standing one, two. Nice block from Panchon. He needs to get this round. Shadow gets this game. He's just going to have too much momentum on his side. He's just pressing all the buttons in the world right now. Counter hit. Shadow taking game one of the reset. Has Shadow gotten the full download? Is there nothing Panchon can do? Now that Shadow's in the lead too, Panchon on the back foot, even if he's able to adjust to Safina in time, Shadow could still switch to the Claudio. This is four games in a row for Shadow. And across, what was it, 14 rounds? He's only given yeah, up two. Yeah, Panchon's given, gotten two rounds out of this. Let's start this. Round one. This is turning into a landslide in Shadow's favor. Counter hit. Shadow is far too comfortable in what he's doing. Panchon. Oh, got the block, but no punish. Panchon needs to find something big to give Shadow some sort of mental damage. Yeah, he's got to put the brakes on fast. Yeah, Shadow's just running away with this, getting all the counter hits, all the conversions, all the launchers, even the cross up. Not quite getting the wall here, but. Oh. Sidestep with on it. Two quick rounds in game two. Working on another no round brown. Fourth, no, third no round brown. Checking 
out the legs. Complete and utter dominance right now. No round, round. round. Up two games to zero. Now Shadow just needing one more to close out the tournament. The last round count out of the last 17 rounds. Shadow's given up two. Panchon sticking with the Nina, sticking with Suk. He is committed now. If, even if he is able to take a game back now, Shadow still has the opportunity to switch it up. Panchon is now in the longest of hauls. This goes to show you why Shadow is such a strong world level player. The adjustments he was able to make and learn Panchon in this short time period. He gave up one game and then hasn't given up a single game since. He's like, eh, I can lose winner's finals. I got a ton of data in the process. KO. Shadow just has all the right reads. Round two. What Punishing. a good round closer. Like back one plus two, such a strong move. Low yeah, parry. Low parry. It almost seems like every round is just stronger and stronger for Shadow. There's a counter hit. Counter hit again. Panchon's now getting his momentum back. Lost frames. Close that out, Panchon. One hit. Low yeah, parry! The read from Shadow now on tournament point. Counter hit, Magic Four to start it off. A little bit too far to connect. Panchon getting momentum back. He's got a little bit of life lead. Good punish. Starting to press more buttons, get more confident. Looks like the last round, Panchon with a nice lead, and there we go. Okay, Panchon get a round on the board. Still Shadow on tournament point. He's got to get two more rounds without giving anyone up. Guaranteed back three off that. Counter hit, yeah. I, I hope all these buttons that Panchon's pressing is more out of confidence and not desperation. Blonde Bomb connects as a whiff punish. Another Blonde Bomb. Got the wall pressure, even on life. Come on, Panchon, closest round out. Can't whiff anything, Shadow will kill. Oh, and he no. hits the Rage Drive raw. That will do it. Shadow 20Z is your fight before Christmas 3. Tekken 7 winner. Grand champion through the loser side of the bracket after losing winner's finals to very own Panchon. Like I said, Played Ganryu all the way through and through, got a ton of data in the process, and then when he was down on the back foot switching to the Zafina, used all that data he gathered on Panchon's Nina play and brought it all the way back. That is a world-class player for you there. And so well, congrats, Shadow20Z yeah. taking first place. What's amazing is that in their first set in the winner's finals, it was 3-2. It's not like it was completely no, it was, dominant. That was an extremely it close set. It went down to final round almost every single game except for, I think, the last two. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it was a huge blowout. Then here comes Shadow ripping out of loser's bracket, and he just dominates his entire way through. Yeah. Lost one game and said, all right, I'm done. Won the next six games straight. I think four of them no Ron Browns. Monstrous. This is, oh, man. this is why you qualify for TWT Finals, ladies and gentlemen. This, this is why you follow Chicago. Come out to Chicago locals and you will get beat the brakes off of by Shadow, by Junior, by Panchon, by Linux, by Epic, by Odell. It's There's so many players. This big list. It's a laundry list longer than your letter to Santa. I'll tell you what. It's, there are a ton of killers. And any given day, we have one of... 25 people who could win a tournament. It's nuts. So that's going to be it for us for the tournament. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was produced by Low Kick Esports. Make sure you follow the channel, follow the Low Kick Twitter. We have much more to come in 2020. I'm NT. 
I'm Puppy Swarm. Thank you so much for commentating with me, sir. Thank you. You guys LC. have a great night. Thanks for watching. And have a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody.